So Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, we'll read them and come back and make a few comments on them. It said, When they had come nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples, saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, wherein never a man said, Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye to, that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. They went their way and found the, the colt tied by the door, without in a place uh, where two ways meet and they loosed him and certain of them stood there said unto them what do ye loosen the coat and they said unto them even as jesus had commanded and they let them go and they brought the coat to jesus and cast their garments on him and he sat upon them, upon him, and many spread their garments in the way, and the others cut down branches off of the trees and, and strewed them uh, in the way. And they that went before them, before, and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of uh, our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and, and into the temple and when he had looked around about upon all things and now the evening tide was come he went uh, out into Bethany, Bethany with the twelve let's pray <clears throat> Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for many, many blessings. Thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. Down through this life, we pray, Lord, your blessings upon the service, upon the message. Give us, Father, what's needful here this morning. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. Help us, Lord, to do your will and trust in you and praise you. In Jesus' glorious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Wasn't unusual for Jesus after... He'd been to the temple, <clears throat> been to Jerusalem to get out of that area because there was getting to be a big crowd there. <laughs> I don't know where you ever went into a area where there's a convention or something like that. Sure. Uh, we happened to hit an area one time like that and you couldn't find a motel room anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Jesus had permanent reservations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in Bethany anyway yeah. uh, place he could go to anytime a lot of times he'd just go in to the Mount of Olives and mm -hmm. and kind of camp out with the olive trees I think best I can tell from scripture that's what he done uh, this particular time he was uh, was heading into Jerusalem and uh, this is a special time for him to go to Jerusalem a very dangerous time for him to go to Jerusalem also because he knew what the Jews were planning he knew in detail what they were planning and uh, even though they made their plans he fit his plans right in along with them mm -hmm. and they were not going to do anything until the time to his hour as he said would show up, would come. So, um, more than likely, he stayed in Bethany this, this particular night and got up, I don't know what time, and headed toward Jerusalem. So, he came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, and uh, he sent it forth two of his disciples. Uh, if I understand it right, Bethany is farther from Jerusalem than. Beth Page is so. Beth Page would have been on the way, um, but he sends two of his disciples. We have no idea which two. <laughs> it's 
scripture doesn't tell us. Could have been any, any two of the twelve. And he saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, you shall find a colt tied, wherein never a man said, Loose him and bring him. Uh, have you ever been sent on a on a journey that you just didn't like to do? <laughs> uh, I used to work at Ballard. It's the first time I, I worked there as a truck driver, and and uh, he sent me to Charleston with this other truck driver that uh, I ended up taking the route after that. But he would. Uh, I don't know why he'd done it, but he'd hand you a package of salads or something that needed to be washed off. They'd go wash them off. I've never been to that store before in my life. I ain't had no idea. I don't like to go plundering through places, you know, that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> after we got back from that first day, I told I told Mr. Bauer, I don't want to work with him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but the disciples had sent on a journey here not knowing having to trust in what the Lord wants them to do and you know many times we're sent on a on a journey to talk to somebody or or to do something for the Lord that he don't give us all the details he just puts on your mind that that's that's what he wants you to do of course here he's telling two of the disciples telling them all probably because they was all with him but uh, just Go your way into this village, and uh, evidently there's a village close to them. I don't, I don't know what the name of it was. I think they all found a, a name of one of the towns there, but Bethany and Bethpage is, is the two that we're told about in Scripture there. So uh, anyway, you had to, they had to go into the town. Uh, probably was familiar with the town, but, you know, just... Just go your way into this village. And of course the Lord knew exactly when they was going, where they was going to go and even give them a description. Uh, I would like to have a description when he told me the, <laughs> the back room's over here. <laughs> the, the place to wash the salad off is, is such and such. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't go plant her into a church or to a, to a store that I'd never been in before in my life. So, um, but I survived it. <laughs> but Matthew says that there was a, a donkey and a colt. And that's not a contradiction for here because Matthew only, or uh, Mark only brings out the colt. And I think that's the one that's important. Uh, somebody said he, he may have rode both of them. I don't think so. I think he rode his colt uh, because of the description. Um, but just, just go into this village and you're going to find a colt. And loose him and bring him to me. <laughs> well, what does that sound like? Stealing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure they had, I'm sure they were a little stressed on this, on this particular room. But if any, he, he made preparations. I don't know how he made them. Where he talked to this gentleman before, or where he, where he just placed on his mind, you know, God can just place on your mind what He wants you to do. He don't really have to verbally say anything to you, but uh, he can he can do that. So we don't know how he done it, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, if any man say unto you, Why do you this? pretty much telling them they're going to be confronted mm -hmm. on what they're getting ready to do. To say that the Lord had need of him and straightway he will send him hither. Uh, I thought about this a lot. You know, if, if there was a king in the area and you walked up to somebody and said the king has need for it, they wouldn't even think nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And Evidently, the owner of this colt knew Jesus also, knew the Lord also. Could have been a 
a close disciple of him, don't know. But uh, a lot of things in Scripture we don't have no idea, but we can speculate. God's allowed us to speculate some. <laughs> and they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met. And they loose him. And I think the reason Mark just mentioned the colt because that's the one that's going to be used. That's the one he's going to ride. Uh, said in certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loose in the colt? What, what's going on here? <laughs> they, they evidently, it says, some of them that said there don't really say the owner did, but the owner could have been with them. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you doing? <clears throat> Loosen the coat. Uh, and they said unto them, even as Jesus had commanded, and they let him go. Uh, what they said to him was, the Lord has need of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, King James don't really bring it out here uh, like it needs to be brought out. But the last part of verse 3 there means that he will use him and return him. <laughs> so it should have been should have been written there from what I understand. So, uh, and I got to take somebody's word for that. So. <laughs> So they, they, they didn't ask any other questions. They didn't want to know who they was. They didn't want to know anything. Just the Lord has need, and that, that's all it took. Uh, when the Lord wants to get something done, He can get it done, can He? <laughs> and He can use us in the process. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on Him, and He sat upon them, upon Him. That's the coat, uh, the one that was brought and Jesus set upon that particular animal. Now, what's, uh, what's the big thing about a, a king riding into a town on a donkey? Peace. Comes in peace. Comes in peace, exactly right. Uh, if they was coming for war, yeah. they would ride on a white horse or, a, or on a horse anyway a horse of war so uh, a donkey is kind of if you if you ever look at a donkey out in the field uh, you think you're just kind of sitting there daydreaming about something <laughs> except for one donkey I, I had some experience with uh, uh, a few days back well, probably a month or two back now uh, it was in this barn, and I was going into this barn to do some work and and also uh, uh, get some manure that I hauled. And quick as you moved the door, if the doors were shut, quick as you moved the door, this donkey made his <laughs> his entry. <laughs> and I tried, I tried, I was doing some video on him. I was trying to get him to do it. Uh, when I was in there, you know, I was videoing, but he wouldn't do it. I think one time I got just a little bit of him. But he was loud. He, he let you, or she, it was a she, uh, she let you know that she was there. But, uh, if you see a donkey out in the field, it's just, just kind of comical. <laughs> it's sitting there, it's like, I don't know. But Jesus said on this particular donkey, and I understand uh, a colt would have been four years or less in age, so he would have been capable of, of handling somebody riding on him, but yet would be young enough. But here's a, kind, of a, kind of a miracle in this story. Uh -huh. The fact that this colt had never been broken or anything, and it and he allows the Lord to, to sit on him uh, without <laughs> kicking him off somewhere or bucking him off. So that's, that's kind, of a, kind of amazing there. But the Lord, when he needs to do something, 
He can do it. Yeah. Now, prior to this, he had not revealed himself to a large number of people. He'd done miracles, and uh, the first miracle being to turn the water into wine. I like what a guy wrote in a song. Evidently, he had trouble with drinking. He said, Lord, please turn the, the wine back into water. <laughs> Couldn't get drunk, drunk off the water. But Jesus performed a lot of miracles, uh, raising people from the dead, healing the sick, doing all kinds of things like that. But he hadn't done them as public mm -hmm. as this particular entry is. Because along with something else that he'd done, another miracle that that is amazing, should have turned the whole city of Jerusalem toward him, was the raising of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. A man that had been dead for four days. His sister said, Lord, he stinks. You know, he, he's going to stink on you. And he called him forth, yep. bound up. Because back then they would wrap the body uh, in cloths. And, and it's hard to walk if you've got <laughs> something wrapped around you. But Lazarus was, aim, was able to come forth out of that grave after four days. Um, had a little boy working, or a young man working with me at Ballard's, and, and uh, uh, he, he had something he could add to this, this story when Lazarus died. said Lazarus went, of course, to Abraham's bosom, or paradise, whichever one you want to call it, and said he was talking to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, there's no scripture for this. It's just his thoughts of, <laughs> of what happened. It said when he got there and, and started talking to them, it wasn't too long that he said, excuse me, he's calling for me. <laughs> it always touched me the way he said that. <laughs> In other words, I gotta go back now. Lazarus had a, uh, had a situation that we hope we never had to go through. He had to die twice. Yeah. <laughs> but he knew what it was gonna be like after the first time. I used to know a man that uh, uh, said he'd had surgery and he had died, and, and he said, uh, and he wasn't, he wasn't that much of a godly man that I know of, and uh, I'd known him for a while. But he said, I'd go back up there right now and let him split me open again. He had, had open heart surgery, from what I understand. And he said, I'd let him split me open again. It wouldn't bother me a bit. I'm thinking, my goodness, <laughs> I've not experienced that yet. <laughs> but we hope when we do have to cross over that God will make it easy for us. And, and if, if we have to, I, I'd rather go in a rapture myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can handle that 11 one hundredths of a second. <laughs> so that, that'd be my way of going. And I understand that this particular route that the disciples and Jesus would take on this particular morning, they would bring the sacrificial lamb down this same way to go to be slaughtered. And I understand also that, and there's no scripture for this, it's just something you find out from history, that where he would enter in to Jerusalem, where they would enter into Jerusalem at this particular time would be where the eastern gate is. And there's only one gate on the eastern side of the city. And uh, I think in around 1500, something like that, some Muslims had taken over the city and, and, uh, and been told that, that Christ would return through that gate, and they sealed it up. <laughs> if you take a picture of it today, that gate is sealed up. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to take somebody's word for this, so I, it, it's not uh, not scriptural. But I do know that it's prophesied that he will return through that eastern gate, and the way they sealed it up is no problem. Yeah. <laughs> you won't have no trouble at all getting through it. 
because in his resurrected body, he had no trouble just walking through walls or anything, walking through doors. Or, uh, he had no trouble doing that. So, uh, but this particular time, and this this was another thing on top of Lazarus. There were a lot of people, uh, of course, in the city for that particular time, and a lot of people knew about Lazarus being uh, raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. And they found out Jesus was coming in to Jerusalem on this particular day. Don't know if they knew he was going to be riding on a donkey, but uh, that's that's the way it was. And uh, said so they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and sat upon he sat upon him. Uh, he got up on this this particular donkey, signifying that I'm a king, but I'm coming in peace mm -hmm. uh, into the city. And said, many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off of the trees and strew them in the way. Uh, that's where we get our palm branches at mm -hmm. <laughs> for Palm Sunday. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna means save us or save. And uh, it's kind of a, similar to hallelujah, but it's a little bit different. But they were, they were praising the Lord. Now, uh, we know from reading scripture and on down the line it's not too many days past this is the same crowd is going to holler crucify crucify and that's that's sad because uh, even though he may have fit their picture here on the donkey he didn't fit their picture later on because everybody at that time I've, I've not read anybody that wasn't looking for someone to come and get them out of the Roman oppression uh -huh. that was going on at the time. So um, that's what they were looking for. And when he didn't do that, and of course, uh, later on in this coming week, uh, Sunday being our first day of the week, Saturday was theirs. So uh, the, the end of the week. Saturday was the end of the week, and that was the Sabbath. Uh, we worship on Sunday because the Lord raised on Sunday. Probably be talking about that a little bit next week. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord allows us. <laughs> and they that went before and they that followed crying, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Praising God and, and worshiping him and and I'm sure I'm sure he needed this encouragement to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to come on down through the week. Um, I tried to find uh, the events per day and you can find them but and they gave you scripture for them, but there's different thoughts on what happened on what particular day. And uh, it's a very important week. Yes, it is. And it ends up uh, being the resurrection as we'll look at next week, the Lord's will. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about, uh, upon all things uh, and now the evening time or the evening has come or was come uh, he went out into Bethany with the twelve he's, he's looking around in the temple um, in, the, uh, in the beginning of his ministry I think pretty close to where he turned the, the water into wine he went into the temple and he wasn't very pleased with what was going on. Uh, they were buying and selling and trading and 
and cheating people and doing all kinds of things. So he goes on this particular day, uh, this Palm Sunday here, and looks around in the temple. And some says he comes back on Monday and and does it again. <laughs> Cleanses the temple again because God's house is a place of worship. It's not a place to eat and drink and and do all kinds of other things. Uh, I think a sanctuary needs to be kept in that way, uh, not eating and drinking. And you might bring a bottle of water or something like that if some people has a medical situation where they got to do that. But, uh, nothing wrong with that. But as far as us gathering together here in the sanctuary and having a meal, I don't, I don't think that should be done. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, that we need to honor God's house and, and honor Him and especially praise Him for what He's done for us. I, I think about that cross quite often, not just, uh, not just at Easter time. I think about it often. <coughs> and uh, the agony and the suffering and things He went through and this is the beginning of that week. And, uh, but I thought about this also. As he comes back at the second coming now, he's coming back for the church to begin with. He's not going not to be down on the earth at that time. But the second coming at the end of the tribulation, he's coming back with us <laughs> on horses. Yep. And white horses. Yes. And you're not going to need no donkey then. No. Peace. <laughs> you're going to come back in power and glory. And Scripture says there, I think when he comes in the rapture that that we'll be missing, and that's the only thing the the world's going to know about. <coughs> and I don't think we'll need the clothes we're wearing. So I think they're going to find little piles of clothes everywhere, <laughs> everywhere they was a Christian. <coughs> And I've thought about this a lot too. Uh, what if you're on a plane and you're not saved and the pilot's a Christian? You're in trouble. And, and the co-pilot's a Christian. You're in trouble. They end up like MS-370. Just keep on flying on autopilot until, until it runs out of fuel. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happens to it. Because the pilot's not going to be there to, to fly the plane. Maybe by that time they'll have them where they can take them over, fly them remotely, and, and I don't know, don't know about that. It's just speculation, also. <laughs> it's just something we can look in the future and say, well, it might, it might happen, it might not happen. But we do know one thing: the Lord is coming back. Amen. Yes, He is. And it pays us to be ready, uh, just like He come into Jerusalem this particular day, and and had things to do in Jerusalem. Uh, he's coming back. Yeah. Coming back at the rapture first and then the second coming. Then we're going to rule and reign with him for a thousand years mm -hmm. on this earth. I wonder about that a whole lot too. <laughs> uh, I wonder if we get come back to the same same place we left. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's just something we don't know. But we'll be ruling and reigning with him. It's going to be a going to be a wonderful time at God's made a lot of promises that's not been fulfilled yet, right. but they're going to be. They will be. And uh, I praise Him for that.